Hello viewers, my name's Alan and welcome back to my home workshop. In this video I finish off building a prototype, slave vice as I've been calling it, to extend the capabilities of my horizontal bandsaw to be able to safely hold short lengths of stock. This is useful to me in a home workshop where I try and scavenge every bit of steel I can. Okay, I've had a bit of a rethink about how I'm going to do this clamping business. <clears throat> Doing something like that uh, is certainly one way of holding it against the, the face here, so that's all right. But the bit that uh, I'm not happy about now is my original idea of putting some sort of a bridge across here and then having a bolt to go down. And the reason I'm not happy about that, if we use this for the bridging piece, when I try and put it uh, in there, um, I'm going to keep running foul of this thing, the, uh, the roller guide. <clears throat> now I could roll that right back there, but then I'd have a huge length of unsupported um, bandsaw blade, which I'm not happy about. So really I want it to be able to work with this guide much closer. So realistically that means the closest I'd be able to put this um, uh, bridge piece for pressing down is back here. And well that would be an improvement over what I had but it's not as uh, good as I was hoping for. I wanted to get the, have the ability to have the hold down really quite close to the front. So I'm thinking I'll go in a different direction now. So what I've got in mind instead is to drill a hole pattern into the base of the plate and uh, in a grid that's um, on 15 millimeter spacing, 15 by 15, and some uh, M8 tapped M8 holes, so that'll create a, a, a plane which I can bolt things to. And then a couple of blocks that look a bit like this with um, two holes on, 50, on a 30 spacing so that uh, I can secure it into any, any pair of holes. And then have three cross drillings which are tapped also for M8. Uh, so I can put clamping force with a screw through against the thing. This is the, uh, the, the, uh, the fixed side of the device. Okay, well I've given the uh, back of this a bit of a clean up, make it a, a bit less disreputable. So it's now time to drill the hole pattern that I want in there. And to do that, I'm using the DRO to lay out the positions. I need to find the piece and that means setting a datum and I'm going to go with this corner because perhaps you can see I'll be uh, measuring everything away from this corner so that first hole is 15 in, 15 in and the rest are 30, 30, 30 etc. So that's what we'll be doing. So we use the wobbler to find that edge and set that as the X coordinate and that is uh, for the Y, that would give me this corner. So we wind it in and we see that it's lining up, becoming concentric. The moment it moves past concentric and kicks off to one side, that's when we, we've uh, found our mark. That's it. <coughs> Now this thing is six millimeters in diameter, which means that position is now got to be adjusted by three millimeters. So we'll make X equal to three. It should have been, it should have been make X equal to minus three. Let me change that. It. So now if I go to zero on the DRO, now we're on zero on the DRO, so the centre of this thing is, is exactly over the this edge. We repeat the process for the, the Y reading. Okay. 
Let's kick that off a little bit. Bring it towards me until it goes concentric. And as soon as it goes past, we'll call that the face. That's it. So Y, we set Y now to three. So if we set on the DRO now, X and Y both to zero. I don't have two cameras, so I can't show you the DRO reading while I'm also doing this. But anyway, that should now be in the correct position. So that's finished with the, the wobbler. And it's time for the drill chuck. So the correct tapping size is 6.8 millimeters, while 1764 is close enough for that, and that's what we'll use. But I'm going to start by drilling, uh, a, this is a, a stubby sort of drill, uh, one eighth of an inch. Uh, so I'm going to start by drilling the hole pattern with that, make it much easier to then come along with this and get all the holes in the right place. Now I've got to take this guy out of the way so I don't drill a hole through my clamp. And I can kick the speed up here to something appropriate for the size of that drill. All right. First hole. Make sure I'm not drilling through my support, I'm not. Now before I go any further, I think I'll write down all the coordinates on these holes on a bit of paper, just so I can try to minimise the chance of putting a hole in the wrong place. Okay, so we we'll move over to the next row of holes now. Well, let's finish the hole pattern with the smaller size drill and now time to uh, swap the drills and repeat the whole process with the tapping size drill and then repeat it all over again with the tap. Oh, it's all good fun. Okay, tapping size drill in, off we go again. Might slow that down a bit. In thirty. Okay, well let's finish drilling all the tapping sized holes. It doesn't look like I've drilled any holes in the wrong place, that's a, a win. Anyway, so now it's time to put the tap in and start doing my M8 threads. Alright, let's see how we go. I'm 
and back it out again. That's one done. Okay, well that's got all my holes drilled. Time to start making my two blocks. So there'll be one that gets bolted down, two bolts that way, and three possible screw holes that way to clamp things against there. And then a second one which will um, be clamped in place with one bolt and have an arm coming across with a clamp screw down. And uh, should all fit quite easily um, in, the, in here without um, getting in the way of this thing, well hopefully anyway, that's what we're shooting for. Well, I'm moving on now to making the block which will be used for putting the hold down force on bits in the um, this new uh, sub vise. This is what I'm working with and it's actually a piece hacked off the end of a, an old tow bar tongue. I think it came off an HR Holden actually, but <laughs> completely irrelevant. Waste not, want not. Okay, so I've done one end and I want to do the other end. And so sit it on the, it's convenient to be able to sit it there, but of course if I do the vice up tight like that, it's gonna be cockeyed. So fortunately I'll be able to use this a <laughs> little bit of scrap, a little bit, and um, tighten up and it should be good. I haven't decided on a length for this piece properly yet. Uh, just squaring it up to see what I've uh, got. Let's knock that burr off with a file. Right. Finish with my packing piece. Okay, so I want to face this off. It's 16 millimeters thick in its uh, rough state, and I'll take it down to 15. So we take half a millimeter off each side. So we'll start off with half a millimeter off this one anyway. Zero the quill DRO. Back down to zero plus a half, roughly. We'll get it exact when we do the other one, other side. It's come down to about 800. That should do. Okay, so that's that done. So we'll zero the quill DRO so that we know where to start from uh, when we do the other side. So we'll take this out of the vise and check its size and work out how much has to come off the other side. So we've got 15.4, so we take 0.4 off. So that should have finished up somewhere near 15. Let's see how close. 
Well, I'm happy with that. Yep, that's good enough. I reckon we call that 15. Okay, so I cut this piece in half. The idea now is to tidy this up to give it a more uh, sort of attractive look. So that's what we're going to do. Well, that looks and feels pretty reasonable. Uh, move on to the next bit. Lost some video here, but I want to use this old clamp as my hold down and fit the blade into a groove in the edge of the block that I've just been making. So I wanted to cut a 4.5mm wide by 7mm deep groove in the edge of this block. And I started off using um, a 4mm end mill and realised that uh, that was a dumb way to do it considering I've got a horizontal mill. I could use a disc cutter which is uh, faster and safer so I gave up the end mill and switched over to using the other machine. Okay so I've moved my piece over to the um, horizontal milling machine because I want to cut a slot it's about uh, 4.5 millimeters wide and about 7 millimeters deep. Now engaging the, uh, the feed I'm taking a one millimetre deep depth of cut. Okay, that's finished the cut. I'll come back for the next one. Raise the table a millimetre. Now I want the slot to be 4.5 millimetres wide, but I don't have a mic to do that, so I'll use my small hole gauge see what we've got. Right, 3.665. I guess we can say 3.67. So um, the 4.5 that I want, less the 3.67 I've got, is 0 0.83. So basically I've got to take about 0 0.4, 0 0.41 off each side of the, the trench. Let's, let's do that. So this was the uh, the second width, uh, the second cut for setting the width, 0.41. Hopefully at the end of this cut we'll have um, the trench the right size. Uh, see what we got. So we were shooting for 4.5 and we got 4. Oh, that's pretty close. Happy with that. Hopefully you can read that. It's saying 4.506. So what was cutting this uh, slot all about? Well, what I want to do is have that as my hold down block and the, this is a, uh, a very unloved clamp that's been repurposed and um, the idea is going to be to press this into there and weld it in. Oh, put it upside down. Like that. And then uh, use this as the adjustable height um, clamp. 
and to, to hold it in place I'm going to drill a hole through here so I can bolt it down to any of these any of these holes. Uh, that's the plan. Okay so I think you can see here now how I'm hoping this is going to work. So I've marked it to cut off so it'll fit anywhere underneath there. So obviously the next job is to cut that blade to length and hope that I've marked it in the right place. But if anything it'll probably be a bit too long and so it could easily be trimmed back if that proves to be necessary. Now cut this to length, I'll best get on with the uh, drilling this hole because it'll be easy to do that before I weld this in. So I'm getting set up to uh, drill the to drill the hole down through there. So obviously I've got to find the centre. But the first thing was to uh, find a way of putting it in the vise so I could drill all the way through without drilling into whatever was holding it up. Now I want it to be in the middle of the vise. <coughs> I didn't explain this before, but the reason I want it in the middle of the vise is there is actually a well in the middle there, so you can't stand anything in the middle unless it's uh, able to reach across to the sides. So, use two small um, uh, blocks, two shorter blocks I should say, to create a nice big gap in the middle for my drill to go down through like that and then obviously I can't do the vise up against that so I'll put another parallel in there to uh, put the clamping force on that and a quick check to make sure Yep. so now I'm confident that I'll be able to uh, drill the hole all the way through without drilling into the vise or my parallels. You've seen this routine before, edge finder to find where this thing is and then uh, get the centre. So DRO has got a very handy function so I zeroed the Y axis before I made my last move so that now is the distance between the um, two faces of my block uh, including three millimetres each side for the diameter of the wobbler thing but there's a handy little function here make y equal to whatever it was before divided by two so now when I move the y-axis back to zero I'll be right on the centre I can't do that very well oh there we go so that's it we're right on the centre line now It's as easy as that. So now all I have to worry about is the uh, offset in the X direction. So we finished with the wobbler. That smack you can hear is me hitting the top of the, the drawbar to release this out of the taper. So we put him back in the rack. And grab the chuck. There we go in there. <coughs> Let's pull the drawbar tight and wedge the taper in the in the quill. Um, okay, so now it's gonna draw the hole. So this has got to be a clearance hole for an 8mm bolt. So we'll just check the actual diameter of the shank. Oh, let's go to millimetres. And that's actually um, a bit under 8mm and the twist drill is almost a dead certainty drill slightly oversized. So I think an 8mm hole should give us plenty of clearance. I guess we want to make it a bit bigger if we have to, but let's go with 8mm. But we'll start with something that will give us a, a precise hole location. One of these little guys. Got a very stiff for a small diameter on the end. And give us a good start point. Just to make sure the drill doesn't wander when it first starts drilling. 
Uh, so we need a bit more speed. Yeah, something like that. Let's do to get us started. So that'll get the drill started where I want it to start. <coughs> Dab of cutting fluid. Yeah, I think we come down a little bit from there. Be more like 600, see how that goes. We're at 30 now, so getting close. That's it. Finished with the drill, which did a pretty good job, I guess. Don't know how accurate the hole is yet, but uh, the drill didn't have any trouble anyway. They obviously used pretty good... Uh, steel when they were making tow bars, tow bar tongues. Okay, so now we'll deburr the top of the hole, put a slight chamfer on it. I won't be recessing the cap into the top of the block because I'll be wanting to have access to tighten it with my fingers and only use the Allen key at the last minute. All right. It doesn't take much with that uh, bit. Yeah, that feels pretty good. And does my bolt go through? Oh, well it might. There's a bit of a burr on the bottom, that's what's going on there. But that'll be fine. So that job's done. Let's take it out and deburr the bottom. So that's all. Thank you, Dory. I have to shorten that bolt. Okay, time now to uh, press these two pieces together before I get onto the welder. Alright, so I'll just put a clamp these two together to make it a bit easier to hold in the vise. That in there. That in there. Wind it in. That's it. Simple as that. This clamp off. And there we have it. Ready to be uh, welded. So I thought before I welded it up, it'd be a good idea to check that the blade is actually perpendicular to the base of the block and I've got a faint little light behind it so we can see how much light's coming through and uh, certainly isn't going to win any precision awards but for what I want it to do that's way close enough so pretty happy with that be interesting to see how different it looks after I welded it and so uh, because we are in uh, prototype mode or make it up as you go along mode in some respects thought I'd do one last check before I do any welding and we can see that uh, that's going to work just fine. Be able to clamp that in place. And there is in fact clearance um, here. So I'll be able to put this anywhere under on there and we should be fine because that's as low as it's going to go. If I've got that wrong, I can always shorten it again anyway, but I'm, I'm pretty sure the, the, the blade is now underneath that um, surface, so I don't think it's going to go much lower than that. Anyway, maybe a bit of fine tuning there, maybe not. But anyway, as far as uh, proving the prototype, I think that's fine, and we'll move on now to, to actually welding this uh, upright to the base. This piece here I have welded now. And as is the case for me usually, my welding results are wildly variable. Sometimes they come out really well, others not. 
in this case didn't go very well at all, really. Uh, the, the world is certainly secure, but it was all over the place. But fortunately, with a big clean-up with the milling machine, I've got uh, a reasonable presentation. But that's the story with my welding. Uh, most of the time it's good enough, but I'm certainly not going to try and show any um, <laughs> of my feeble welding efforts on uh, YouTube. It's enough that I can stick things together, mostly, and uh, I mean, if I um, refused to start a project because I couldn't do everything perfectly, I'd never do anything. So there you go. I'd try not to let the things I can't do stop me from doing the things I can do. There's no doubt that these two pieces are stuck together well enough, even if the welding doesn't look that flash. Okay, um, as I've uh, perhaps implied previously, I really like to use up all the bits of metal I've got rather than buying new stuff. So this tow bar tongue here is a case in point. I just finished sawing this to try to uh, get some reusable pieces out of it. And uh, I'm hoping that this piece here will be um, appropriate for the block to uh, put the clamping pressure pressure that way. So I'll be trying to clean this up and see if I can get that piece out of this bit. Oh, and by the way, the racket that you're hearing in the background and sometimes camera shake is because literally the house next door to me is being bowled over today because there's a very large excavator on steel tracks and they're knocking it over and I'm uh, getting tremors coming through the ground that makes the camera shake and you can probably hear racket in the background. Oh, my apologies for that, but I can't change it. Okay, what we're doing here, between interruptions from the uh, demolition site next door and, and other distractions, is milling an 8mm wide trench across here, 1mm deep. And that'll create a land each side, so that when I bolt through this to hold it down to my metal plate below, it'll sit on those two lands and therefore have much less opportunity to rock side to side. I've also set up my adjustable um, home brewed um, vice stop so that when I've done the groove on this side, I'll just turn this over and uh, I'll be able because this is, has been centered on that block against these two faces. So I'll just be able to turn it over, rest it up against that, and I'll be good to go for the groove on the other side as well. So here we go. There we go. So there's a bit of deburring, we should be good. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at that. So a bit of deburring needed, but uh, that'll guarantee that it. Uh, stands on two the two lands on the base plate and can't wobble so i've got i've now done five of the sides of that original sort of vaguely trapezoid shape i've just got the the one side left now to um, make a mirror image of this uh, this other side so next move is to work out um, how long i want this piece to actually be and where the whole pattern is going to go through so I'll go over and hold it on the plate and have a think about that. Okay, well the demolition guys have knocked off for the day, so at least we won't be hearing any more of that. Now, it's time for me to drill the hole patterns in here. So the idea is to drill two holes this way, with the 30mm uh, centre to centre spacing, so it will match up to the hole pattern. But if I'm on this line, for example, distance from there to the end is 15. But if I'm on that line, distance from there to there is 30. So um, I'd like to have a hold down screw here on whichever line I'm on. So the hold down screws will be symmetrical, one in each end and one in the middle. But the hold down screws will be asymmetric. So I can put it on one way round when I'm on this line and the other way round when I'm on that line. But in either case, 
the, um, there'll be a screw right on the end here. Just to complicate it though, the, ideally the block would be 75mm long, but this piece of steel which I've prepared from the scrap bin is only 74 So uh, tolerances are going to be very tight. Because of that, I'm measuring everything from the centre point because I can accurately determine that with the wobbler. So my vertical hole pattern is going to be worked out from the centre line because I, I, I know where that is. So maybe this diagram helps. So the vertical screws are on this block here. So one's going to be 15 from this end and the other's going to be 30 from that end. So the vertical hole pattern's asymmetric, but working from the centre line, one is 7.5 and the other's 22.5. When I come to do the horizontal screws, that pattern will be symmetrical. So there will be one on the centre line and the others two will be at 31.5 each off that centre. And the screw, the holes on the end here are going to be very close to the end, like one and a half millimetres I believe, for a clearance from the end, which will still be fine, but uh, I've just got to make sure I get all the holes in exactly the right place. So we'll start off with a, a stiff um, drill to accurately mark. So. First one's going to be 7.5 off the off that centre line, so we use the DRO for that. There's 7.5. Now we'll give ourselves a mark there. And the other one's going to be at 22.5 from 22.5 from the other side on the other side of the centre line. So there's my 22.5. Okay, so now we'll put the 8mm drill in. That's another point. The vertical holes are clearance for 8mm for the screws holding into the base plate. The screws in the horizontal plane will have to be tapped into this block, so they'll be drilled at a different size. I shall try my best not to forget that. That was a mistake I made recently on something else. I didn't drill tapping size, I drilled clearance size and ruined the piece. Lack of concentration. Okay, so we'll come back to 7.5, the other side of the centre line now. And drill the, the second hole. This uh, steering wheel, quill wheel, certainly makes this sort of operation easier. If you want to know why, you should go and have a look at my other video where I made this quill wheel thing. As you just keep going round without having to reposition the lever, it's much easier. All right. So time to um, take it out and roll it over and drill the whole pattern the other way. So I'll take the eight millimeter drill out before I forget, because I, as I said before. The cross drilling is for a uh, tapping for eight and M8 bolt, not a clearance like these guys. One issue I've got to deal with is um, whether to worry about uh, relieving. I think I better allow for the, the larger one and what I'll do is just mill across. So the head of that bolt um, touch over 13 but I think if I uh, mill across at uh, 13 maybe even 12 um, I'd have enough clearance okay so I've decided to use a half inch end mill so we're still on 7.5 so we're right for that one 
Um, so I need to come down to there plus a millimetre, don't I? And we zero the quill DRO. Right. That should do that nicely. So now when we drop this in there, we'll be able to go all the way down. Bit of deburring to be done there, but uh, you get the idea. So that, that'll be good. All right, same with the other ones. Okay, well the demolition guys next door seem to be having smoke out at the moment. So I'll see if I can get a little bit of recording done. So, um, just doing a test fit on this piece. It seems to uh, fit uh, without any trouble at all. So I'll put it on like that. So it, that uh, in that configuration it's right up to the end. You can turn it around, put the next row over. And uh, that's a good lineup as well. So that's all looking good. It's irrelevant, I suppose, but it's interesting to notice that maybe not surprising that it also fits that way around. <laughs> Though I can't imagine I'll be doing anything with that. Anyway, so now I've got to put the um, holes that go straight through that way. I think I'll do one right on the end here, as per plan, one right on that end, but this one here, instead of being in the middle of this length, I'll put in the middle of the hole pattern, so it's more over here, so then that gives me more options to have it in different orientations and get coverage, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so whilst there's a lull in the demolition, demolition let's uh, see if we can get a bit more done. Uh, so we'll put that back in there. Make sure it's square, snug that up. Oh, that's good. Just square this way as well. I come over this way, just tap it down. I'll tap that down. Yes, both of them are trapped, so that's down hard on both sides. Um, don't have a, a center line to go back to here. I do have the indexing preserved for um, location of these holes and the, the center, but I'm going to have to find this piece again. Let's uh, disarm this so I don't hurt myself on that. Okay, so um, in locating the line uh, for the holes across this way, have to make sure that the, um, there's going to be enough room for the head when this is on, on the plate. So this is uh, 13 diameter. So if I make sure that the, uh, the, the, the whole center line of the holes is um, seven up from this edge, then there's going to be a little bit of clearance for the, the side of that. So I'm getting ready to, to do these holes. And um, because I know it's very tight around here, what I thought I'd do is put a pair of 8mm dowel pins uh, here and to mimic the hole which is going to be drilled down there, uh, the outer diameter, even though I'm going to be drilling it for an 8mm and an M8 bolt, the outer diameter of the threaded hole will be somewhere near this dowel pin size. So I can position this by measurement, which I have done. Um, but I want to check um, whether or not, in fact, the, I could come a bit close to this pin and have more meat on the outer end. So I've finished with this guy now. This won't be coming out of the vise again until i um, uh, finished. So I can undo this. get it out of the way it's 
So I've currently got the uh, spindle on the 31.5 millimetre offset from the uh, the centre of the piece. So that's where the calculator position was. But what we can also see now is that um, that actually leaves more space between these two pins than I need. So I'm going to use the opportunity to get a bit closer. So I don't think I need any more than 25 millimeter clearance. So uh, let's come a bit closer this way. So. With that adjustment, my instead of going at 31.5, I got 31.2. So I guess I've picked up a 0.3 of a millimeter. Oh well, there's no effort to do it. It uh, might help. I'll take this back out of the way. And <coughs> put this back on its um, seven millimeter inset. And I think we're right to drill a hole. Time to make some chips. So that will give me a, a start point. Make sure I've got my correct size. Yeah, 6.7, that, that's about right for an M8. Oh, sounds like the guys of next door are back from smoke O2. All right. Oh, and I moved this uh, parallel away as well, so there's room for the drill to go down without uh, hitting that. didn't break through into the adjoining hole that's a good start so I think while we're at this location I'll um, put the tap in tap the hole doesn't appear to have broken through so we'll call that a success. So let's do the other two holes. Okay so I've finished uh, drilling those extra holes so we've now got the, the three for the cross bolt and as you can see if I put it on this line that bolt and uh, Maybe this one, which one? Another one. We'll be in a position to squeeze, but if I need to put it on um, that line to be a bit closer, I can turn it around. And we'll still be able to squeeze at, at that end. And um, because I've drilled the line, those lines off centre, uh, the demolition guys are back making the camera shake. I have the opportunity to. Um, have the clamping force a bit further away from the plate. So I think we're ready to do a try out on the machine and uh, see whether this prototype actually works. Okay well events <laughs> against the background of all this demo next door. Um, it's time to try out this piece now I've finished all those drilling and tapping. So just reminding yourselves that was the problem I was trying to solve when you try and hold a short bit to 
vice goes cockeyed. So, their new handy dandy prototype. spot, get you out the way, get you in a little bit. Ready to cut about there. So we'll hold the back down. Haven't got quite the right screws in yet but uh, we'll sort that out later. It is Still a prototype at this stage. See if it works. Well, yeah, it's got it pretty solidly. Let's see whether the hacksaw agrees with me. I call that a success. Prototype certainly satisfied uh, the original brief, hold short bits so I can cut them off safely. So now I just need to decide um, how to refine it so it doesn't look quite so uh, crappy basically. But it certainly seems to work alright. Plus I've got to come up with the correct screws because I want all the screws to have the same uh, socket size obviously, just to make it easier to drive. I'm certainly expecting to get some value out of this prototype and um, I don't know yet how much uh, effort I'll put into making a nice looking one versus just going with what uh, seems to work. So thanks for watching and I hope you liked it and if you did please consider pressing the like button and subscribing for future episodes.